Come now, rid yourself of that pesky mask. For five gold pieces, you'll be sound of body and mind as what happened last time on the Incurable Party. Oh, uh, would that be Mr. Forge? Yes. Ah, okay. I see you're here on our accepted, uh, ad- admittable visitors. Uh, yeah, please, um, if you go through the store here to my left, uh, a, a ward will be able to escort you to, to her room. All right, I go. Pulls out, like, this flask of this, like, green kind of viscous substance inside inside of it as he, you know, pours a little bit onto his hand, almost as if it's like he's putting, like, aftershave on his hands, right? Mm-hmm. But instead of putting it on his own cheeks, he kind of walks up to you and kind of pats you on your cheeks, kind of rubs it into your, to Wait, your fur a little bit. Wait, we're aftershaving my hair away? <laughs> so, Malachar, you're not wearing a mask, so what's your theories about this disease? Well, people seem to think that it's airborne. <laughs> Nonsense, if you ask me. I, uh, I, I, I believe its origin lies somewhere in the, the psychological realm. People seem to be leaving Goldham in hopes of finding, you know, a, a better place to live as Goldham is, is being kind of constantly terrorized by, by just beasts and like, like feral beasts kind of driven from the, the surrounding forests. But uh, that seems odd to you, Falzerin, considering that Victor is uh, proximity-wise much closer to, to the edge of, the, of this forest, but Victor does not has not had any problems like that. Why is Roland getting his bow ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're within crossbow range. <laughs> Don't hurt me! Pew pew! Right. Okay, great. You guys uh, settle in, in for a long rest. Well, so be it then, my new not-so-friendly friend. I hope you immediately fall ill and can no longer partake in the continuing adventure. So, first first watch on your long rest outside of Victor. First watch is Bryn. So, you guys are just doing regular two-hour two hour watches, I assume? Yep. There's no reason to do otherwise. Sure, there's usually like four hours where Bryn is sort of watching because yeah, I only that's need true. to rest that's for true. so so taking um, taking first watch Brynn then you could meditate for the middle four and then be on be up with Shaft at the end of it too then basically yeah, yeah. that works whatever works so yeah as, uh, you guys settled down and it was already fully dark out but Brynn's shift goes by and then um, she kind of wakes up Falsey and Falsey falls her in same with your Two hour shift. So I, so I wake up and um, w- what sort of weather is it right now? Are you kidding? It's a clear night. Okay. Very beautiful. clear, actually. The stars look very beautiful. Hmm. I'm feeling a, a connection to the magic and from the stars. Yeah, you're kind of absorbing this astrological power and getting ready to harness it for your <laughs> next day. Because <laughs> you, you know you're a Taurus, so. I'm an Aries, actually. No, but oh. falls are in Zatoris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you kind of go and you uh, wake up Gozer. And so I'm just going to interrupt here for a second. Sometimes when you're playing in person, Dungeon Master will like to maybe pull, pull a player or more than one player out of the room or send kind of two or three people away as... They may, maybe they're splitting up kind of thing, and some information would be pertinent to specific characters, and it would be up to those characters to uh, divulge any of that info to the rest of the party, uh, depending on how they decide to roleplay it. So what we're going to do instead of that, since of course we can't really do that, we're gonna, I'm going to send, I'm going to kick off all of you but Gozer, going to kick you all off of your mic and your headphones, so you will have... No idea what's happening while it's happening. And then for the rest of this session, basically, it'll be up to Gozer to determine whether or not she wants to relay any of this info to you. So, go away. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Bye. Goodbye. I'm sleeping. So, Gozer. Yeah. You wake up, still 
pitch black out. But you wake up and around you, the rest of the party, your party is gone. Nobody's there. Thuff's gone. There's there's no sign of them. Did Falzerin wake me up or I just woke up on my own? You you kind of come to and no one's there. Okay. From behind you, you hear this like familiar snarl as you turn and you see this a full-blooded orc wearing this ornate golden breastplate and these yellowed finger bones on this the string hanging around his neck they kind of clank against against his breastplate as he lets out this deep laugh <laughs> happy fool did you think you could hide from clash bone collector clash how you find me you're an easy one to find what you want I want you. You must suffer. You are not fit to rule. (laughs) You're always so reckless, Gozer. You were the fool to think you could lead. You're nothing more than a tack dog that's shaking its leash. I'm assuming you're a little shocked to see Clash. Yes, Gozer is is shocked and, and a little bit scared that she was found. Right, and so you kind of sitting there and you... It's almost like as if uh, all you do is blink and like suddenly before you is still clash but you see Liana on her knees uh, in front of him as he has his long sword resting on the back of her neck. You leave her alone. A bad dog must be disciplined. And he raises his long sword into the air above her. Uh, how far away from him am I? You're real close, like 20 feet. I'm going to to blave and run at him so you charge him yes with your great axe yes and as as you kind of sprint towards him you what are you going to do are you just going to swing at him are you going to like tackle him I'm going to swing at him with my axe okay as you're as you're coming at him he just kind of kicks Leon in the back as she sprawls into the ground away from you guys as he prepares to meet you so go ahead and let's uh well, it's you know it's a one on one, so it's not really need an initiative. So go ahead and take a swing out. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen misses, as you kind of it just kind of glances off of his his breastplate and he just laughs again. You <laughs> fool! <laughs> and he swings at you with his long sword, hits you for a fifteen. Fifteen hits. And does uh, eight slashing damage to you. As he's just laughing at you, like as if he's like toying with you. Okay, I'm gonna take a second and just try and gather my thoughts. And, and I assume this feels real to me. That doesn't feel like a dream or anything. Feels very real, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to. Uh, so I'm standing up right next to him right now, and I'm I'm gonna just try and bring my axe around and right on top of his head. Okay. Nineteen hitting. Yeah, that hits. Uh, that is 17 points of damage. As I scream again and just, ah, and bring my axe down on him. And you cleave right into his skull. And, and I'm going to try and get between it. him and Lyanna. Yeah, and you, he just, your axe just sinks like down to the bridge of his nose into his forehead. And he just drops his sword and you kind of hoist, uh, like slough him off of your axe into the ground. I say, you are nothing. And uh, Liana is kind of just sprawled on, on the ground, kind of almost in like a fetal position as if she's she looks hurt. He's not moving anymore. He's not. He's not. He's not moving anymore. I'm. I want to uh, chop his head off. <laughs> I rolled an eleven. <laughs> that's that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then I'm gonna kick his head away, and I'm gonna turn to Liana and be like, "I I thought you died." So is you, would you kneel down to her? She's kind of like, you know, she's prone. No, I'm still standing up, just looking at her. Axe is off to the side. And I'm just looking at her and I say, I, I, I thought you died. She's just kind of like weeping. She's uh, unresponsive. Did he use you to find me? Still, she's just, just kind of like... <laughs> Can I see her face or is she like... No, she's kind of got her back to you. I said, I'm going to turn her over so I can see her face and make sure it's her. 
Sure, yeah. As you turn over, it, it's her visage, yeah. And she's just kind of like, just like almost like a wreck, like a shell of her former self, it seems. Let's see if she's hurt anywhere. Look her over. Um, do a, uh, why don't you do a medicine check? <laughs> I rolled a one. Uh, <laughs> and that's a plus zero on that. She looks perfectly physically I, healthy. I don't see any blood. <laughs> nope. No blood, no slashes. Even if she had a gaping wound across her neck, she probably wouldn't see it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to shake her a little bit and be like, I thought you were dead. So as you shake her, her weeping kind of turns into this this laugh, almost this cackle. <laughs> and her form just kind of shifts. It's almost like this shimmer as you, she turns into the kind of this like haggard, like purple-skinned woman. And uh, she kind of reaches this, her a long, like, fingernailed hand and plunges it into your chest as you kind of gasp. Like, almost as if she's, like, like phasing a hand into you kind of thing. It just kind of goes right into your chest. And you can't breathe. And it feels like you're suffocating. And almost, like, like paralyzed, too. Like, you can, can't even move. It's tough to even do anything. And suddenly you just, like, the whole world kind of fades, fades into black as it also, uh, similar, like, kind of shimmers around you, like, this whole weird, like, hallucinate, halluc- hallucinatory terrain type kind of thing, like, it's just shimmering and fades to black. And you jolt awake as Falzern is kind of over you, giving you, like, a shake as he's getting you up for your shift. So Falzern, you go over and you kind of give Gozer a shake, waking her up for a shift. Okay. As she kind of comes to. I swing at Falzerin. All right, make uh, an unarmed attack. Uh, did I add my strength modifier to the yeah, roll? Yeah. That's a 16. That hits That's hits Falzerin for sure. Well, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Even if you reacted and used shield, it only gives your AC to 15, oh, right, so that, hit, 15. that hits Falzerin, yeah. Okay. So roll a, a, a one. Well, it's one plus your strength. So that's four. So <laughs> falls your So four damage. Punched yeah. right in the face. Oh, Gozer, what are you doing? And I'm going to jump up and I'm going to roar. It's me, ah! falls her in. <sighs> Oh, sorry. What do you want? Uh, well, you're up for a watch. Is everything okay? Fine. Good dream. You had a nightmare. And I walk away. Okay. Um, I'm gonna kind of, you know, try and compose myself after <laughs> being smashed by a half Clean half your pants out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean my underwear out. Replace them. I assume we're all awake now, right? Yeah, I think Gozer's, yeah, Gozer's scream up. kind of wakes uh, Brynn and, and Shaft up as well. And it, you, so you kind of wake up, you just kind of basically in time to see falls and kind of like what rubbing his face as gozer is kind of just sauntering off so i'm gonna look over to the other two and say i think she was having a nightmare guys she i tried to wake her up she swung at me and punched me in the face well, that's an assumption she just could be punching me in the face that's true it's true <laughs> she does have a history i also have very <laughs> clean underwear right now in case anyone's wondering <laughs> uh, i wasn't but thanks just wanted to clarify <laughs> it's always- it's always good to have an underwear check. All right, I'm going back to sleep. But I'm going to walk back and I'm going to say, uh, you know of purple creature that can put their hand in your chest? Yeah, it was a dream. Never mind. I roll back over. I've never heard of that, Gozer. Gozer, what are you talking about? Purple creature. Uh, a thing in my dream attacked me by putting its hand through me and it was purplish all the way to the other side just kind of blacked out before that part hmm. where where were you in this dream here were you here, right here you right, were right here. where you're laying yes hmm. how do you feel now are you hurt uh did the, the actual damage happen Leland uh no okay no no I feel f- fine? Well, not quite fine. So actually your maximum hit points was reduced by nine. 
Oh. Uh. So, hang on, gotta do math. Um. Uh, uh, be a weaker. Weaker? Hmm. So you think something actually happened to you during this dream you Some, had? Something found me. I'm gonna walk away again. I'm, I'm done talking. Do I know anything about, like, creatures that can attack you not physically like this, like in a dream or anything? Why don't, um, Brynan falls in, because Shaft is back to sleep, right, Shaft? Yes. So, Brynan Falsy, you can... <laughs> You can both make me a make me an arcana check, and f- okay, Falsy, you can make me an arcana, and why don't Bryn you make me a nature? I don't know if that's any better for you, Bryn, but uh, no. They both use intelligence, so oh, okay. eleven, eleven for me. Uh, sixteen for Falzer. Falzer and you, uh, yeah, Bryn, you're kind of unsure. Yeah. Um, but Falsy, you've definitely read about. I mean, you you have a familiarity with with different planes of existence, so you kind of the brief description that Gozer gave you, it's almost feels like you know something that would maybe invade someone's dreams would have the ability to to uh, travel to the what's called the ethereal plane, and that would kind of be a, a route to which someone may be affected by something like that. But you are still unsure exactly what creature it could be it's i mean there's there's, right. a, uh, there's a multitude of creatures it could be but i'm familiar with this alternate plane called the ethereal plane and in theory it would make sense that something could have come from there and, yeah and done something like this right okay and you also know that on you guys being on the material plane which is you know like regular like the world basically that's what's referred to as the material plane people on the material plane can't see things that are in the ethereal plane but ethereal plane can see the material plane you would need okay. some, you need a specific spell to be able to see something on the ethereal plane while you uh, are on the material plane okay so a purple ethereal uh, purple beast of some sort from the ethereal plane has reached out and done something to go are over. you sharing that with us right now or are you just no, speaking I'm, to yourself i'm thinking out loud okay um so goes or walked away it's just you and i so uh so i'm gonna lean over to brin and say Brian, you know, thinking back, I think I've read something about an alternate plane. It's called the Ethereal Plane, um, and there's all sorts of bad things, beasts, and other things that could maybe have done something like this. Sounds like this could be what Gozer's describing, that something's reached out and caused her some sort of harm from the Ethereal Plane. You ever heard of that? Or? No, this no. is all new to me. Hmm. What should we do? I don't know what we can do. If it's another yeah, plane of existence that we can't see. It's from what I know of reading about this, there's not there's not much we can do on this plane to interact with them. Um, not with any magic that I have access to. I guess we just continue on with the plan and hope that this doesn't happen again. Is there any way to guard Gozer against this? Probably um, with some sort of magic, but I don't have any access to that sort of magic. I haven't learned any spells that that could be of any help. Falzerin, um, why don't we? Why don't you give me a retroactive perception check while you were on your watch? Let's kind of. Okay. It's good. It's a nineteen. Okay, so. Uh, while you're on your watch, you you know you're doing what you, you know. It's a watch. It's called a watch for a reason. So you are you're being aware and and taking in your surroundings and making sure there's not some weird goings on around. But as you're kind of you know glancing over your party members, kind of asleep uh, over the your two hours, you you kind of notice like Gozer is like she's very still. Like very still, like almost as if she's like kind of in like some like like sleep paralysis type kind of effect. When you wake when you walk over to to wake her up, she just kind of feels like very stiff, almost as if she's like like tensed up, but still like asleep. Okay. Hmm. So do you just continue on with uh, Brandon? You want to go back to your meditation and and falls, and you just carry on with your with your wa- uh, or 
Sorry, it's Gozer's. I think Gozer's, it's watch. Gozer's. So both. If it's if it's Gozer's watch, I'm up. I'm done. Uh, no, you've only been meditating for a couple hours. You just got like. Meditating. Oh, was I the first watch? Yeah, you were the first. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you guys can both go back to to sleep, um, kind of for Gozer's yeah. watch. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to do. So I think I'm, you know, I'm a little bit concerned and worried about going to sleep, but. Sure, right. Well, falls are into to get the rest of your benefit from the long rest. You definitely need to go back to sleep. But, Bryn, you could actually stay up with Gozer and meditate for Shaft's uh, last shift, like the last two hours, if you wanted to. Yeah, I think Bryn is kind of freaked out by this and uh, doesn't go back to sleep right away. Well, uh, Bryn, actually, you know, so elves actually don't sleep. So, like, like your meditation, it's not actually a sleep. So you actually know that if this is something affecting people's dreams, right? You you are you're actually safe. You're on a, you would be unaffected because you literally don't sleep. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's not like I'm freaked out about it. It's not about myself, I guess. But it's more like I would like to help Gozer on her watch as far as like make sure she's all good. Absolutely. Yeah. That because totally like, what sense. if something happens and she's passed out on her watch? So I. Uh, I will plan to meditate at the end. Gozer, are you doing anything specific with your two hours? Or is there something you wanted to do or, or say to Bryn? Because now it's just the two of you. Yeah, um, I was going to say, do I notice anything different about Gozer while we're up together? I definitely have my axe sitting with me. And I assume I have some kind of sharpening tool. So I'm sharpening my axe um, and just watching very, just very vigilantly watching everything. Am I able to observe if she looks different or, like, is acting different or... Okay, why don't you make a perception check? Ten. <laughs> Gozer, what does, uh, what does she see? Uh, yeah, I, normally I would think during watch I would be kind of laid back, keeping an eye out on everything, but, you know, just kind of sitting there. I think now I'm more, um, maybe even pacing occasionally. Like, any little noise I'm jumping at and, and just super anxious seeming right almost as, if, almost as if you just want to pick up and like go right now you yeah I, I and i want i want to hit something <laughs> well that seems normal but <laughs> yeah okay so bryn bryn sees gozer so I'm, I'm sleeping with shaft in between me and gozer <laughs> <laughs> bryn sees gozer pacing and kind of like sheepishly keeping her distance like giving gozer her space is like Hey man, like, are you gonna be all right? Clash found me. Who? Cla- Clash, chieftain of my tribe. Clash, the chieftain of your tribe. I've never heard you mention him before. No need to. I tried to take over the tribe and failed. I should be dead right now. You did. I, I did. You tried to, like, you took Clash on, or what happened? Yes. Uh. I attempted to uh, battle him for the chi- for the tribe, and I lost. Is that why he's after you? Yes. Liana saved me. Liana? I remember you uh, you accidentally calling me Liana one time. She she's dead, but she attacked me. Clash attacked me, and Liana attacked. Me. I don't understand. I don't I don't know what happened. In your dream that you just had, you saw them? That was a dream? I I don't know. It seems like um Falzern was telling me that there's another plane of existence called the Ethereal Plane. Um it's a plane that can see us but we can't see them. So, I don't know, that freaked me out enough to stay awake with you. It it felt real. It it felt very real. Well, from what I can tell of your behavior, it, it was real. What can we, what can we do to protect ourselves from a pl- I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Bryn takes a step I, back. <laughs> I got my, I got my axe up. And I'm like, I don't know. <sighs> gozer, gozer, gozer. Put the. Oh, uh, sorry, Bryn. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. This is a really good roleplay. But Bryn, why don't you make me a, make me a, a history check as you're trying to recall um, a, a very recent memory. <laughs> Crit fail. Oh, okay. Never mind that. <laughs> there's something. There's something you. Something that happened in Victor that you kind of recall that may have something to do with this. Uh, 
a brief encounter, but uh, you can't quite remember exactly the words that were used. Okay, Gozer, Gozer, put the axe down. Okay? No. We're on the same... No. Listen. Okay, fine. Then hold the axe, but I know you want to hit something. Don't hit me. We're on the same team here. I, I won't hit you. Okay. I want to help you figure this out. Good. Okay. Do you want the others to know, or do you want me to keep this between us? I don't care. Okay. I'm not going to tell them. If Cla- Okay, so here's the thing. I thought Liana saved- Liana saved you, so why would she be attacking you? That's- I don't know. She was dead. Yeah. They killed her. Is- How could she attack me if she's dead? She's dead. But is Clash dead that you know of? No. He's still alive. I was unable to kill him. Killed him in my dream. Took his head off. The one you just had? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Goals are, goals are done talking. Goals are gonna watch. Okay. Well, if I figure anything out, I'll let you know. Good. And if you have any more dreams like that, tell me you about it. You will know. Okay. The third shift kind of passes, again, without incident, incident and then... Uh, Gozer uh, and Bren, you guys can rouse Shaft, and then... Gozer is not going back to sleep. Okay. Gozer will sit and rest, but Gozer is not going back to sleep. And uh, so, Bren, you go back to meditating. Yep. And Shaft, you're you're up as... Uh, yeah, you bedded down pretty late, so it's actually kind of... The, the sun is kind of starting to rise in the, the very early morning for, for Shaft's last, last shift. Okay. Are you talking to Gozer at all? She's still up, which is unusual. No, but it's that she had a bad dream, and we all went back to sleep, and if she wants to stay up, I'm okay with that. Alright. And your two hours kind of pass, and, and uh, everybody but Gozer is now benefiting from a long rest. So, Gozer, you have you gain no benefit from a long rest. Okay, so I still have my one level of exhaustion. Do I get another level, or no? Uh, no. No, you don't get another level. Okay. But you don't gain any of your hit points back. You don't regain any uh, any of your expended rages. You don't gain any of those back. And your maximum is still reduced by, by nine. So a long rest, I get all my hit dice back and my health. No, you get hit dice equal to half your level. You get half of your expended hit dice back. So I had two used, so I get one back? Yeah, you saying? know what? I, okay. I, think, uh, I think we actually did mention it in an after party. Let's just house rule and long rest you get all your hit dice back that's just that's just easiest to keep track of and i'm totally fine with playing with that i don't i don't the way the way our sessions go as well you guys are rarely allowing yourselves as a party to get in situations where you're continuously going through bouts of combat which i think is is what short rest is meant to be right it's like a almost like this gauntlet of of adventuring allowing okay great we had a couple of huge fights. We're all down. Let's take an hour, regain our composure, and we can kind of continue through this dungeon or or, or forest or whatever the hell you're in, right? I think that's the idea of, of that mechanic. Okay. So, yeah. Long rest, just, just regain all your hit dice. It's just easy. It's way easier to keep track of it that way. Okay. Cool. I'm f- totally fine with having more hit dice. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, and again, like, we, like I mentioned, <laughs> you guys have zero other healing, so I think that's just... <laughs> Just fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you can throw more stuff at us. Yeah, I can throw bigger, badder, fitter, faster, stronger things at you. <laughs> <laughs> purple ethereal plane monsters. Yeah. <laughs> All the purple ethereal plane monsters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When Gozer hit me, she dealt four damage. I guess Yeah, but no, you get it back. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're, that's fine. You're totally... As long as that four damage didn't knock you out, you, you'll be... No, no, I... <laughs> okay. I was it's at, happened uh, before. Uh, deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys decided to head kind of north and then kind of east around the city of, of Victor. Yes, sure. absolutely. <laughs> so you're basically circumnavigating the city, uh, avoiding going through it again and all that weird sicknessing, sicknessy stuff that's that's going on. Uh, and then, what you want to hit this kind of eastern road that connects Victor and Zexa, right? Yes. To, yes. Yeah. Takes you through these woods. Yeah, I think we were a little bit worried that there might be there was tales of um, you know feral beasts coming out of the woods, so we wanted to go north. Yes, right? that's that's the word. Uh, yeah, that was one of the rumors 
that uh, Roland Wright had passed on to you, and also kind of what's part of the info from the job you got and why Golden wants these towers shut down. Did we decide whether we're going through the forest at all, or if we kind of have to either way, yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to go over the bridge, I believe, first, and then sort of maybe go on the edge of the forest uh, across, bypass Zexa, and just take the northern part of the forest over straight to Golden. Yeah, take, like, it looks the most like narrow part of the just, forest, basically. Just south of Zexa, there's a bit of a gap in the forest, is that right? Yeah, we'll just be right on the edge of the forest and then head straight over to Golden. Okay. Go through as little forest as possible. Got it. Okay. All right. Off we go. Yeah, we'll just little red riding hood it over there. <laughs> what's uh, <laughs> right. what's Thuft doing? Thuft, you know, just sticking close to Gother. He's uh, he has certainly picked up on her uneasiness, but he he's not questioning her about it or anything like that. He doesn't know anything about dream attacks and do things you, like do that. Do you ask him? Do you talk to him about it? Uh, like, yeah. So, okay, so, like, so, so we're yeah. traveling now. You guys are kind of traveling and walking now. So yeah, as we're as you're. I'm kind of wondering. Yeah, as we walk, I'm I'm wondering. Uh, hey, Thuft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, and I'm Thuft. I know you're. Yeah, I know, I know you're. Uh, pretty close with Gozer. You notice how she's been acting a little. I'd like to talk to him so Gozer can't hear, but she's been acting a little on edge, eh? Oh, oh, uh, what can I do to help the king? Well, have you ever, have you ever been attacked in a dream before? Or have, like, heard about someone that's been attacked in a dream? No, d- dream's good, dream's good. Thuff's dreams, Thuff dreams of big, big mountains of, of gold and, and a shiny crown and a, and a cool chair. But Thuff, Thuff's not king. Thuff wake up and then Thuff's get sad. Have you ever heard of the ethereal plane, Thuft? The the ethanol ethanol plane? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's a good drink we have in the caves. <laughs> ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty clear. Thuft has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So Bryn just kind of looks at looks at Gozer and does a little tap tap on the head. He's like. You watch out for Gozer, okay? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I protect the king. All right, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes you, let's see, what did we say? We can go about four of these map squares. So, I mean, the city's quite, lo- Victor's quite large, so even just getting all the way around it takes you. Yeah, we're kind of to the edge. Yeah, the better part of the day here as you hit the hit the eastern road that leads out of Victor and through these woods, you kind of make it to the the edge of this forest. By the time um, that's about, like, you know, eight-ish hours of, of traveling. What's the weather like? The weather is a, there's a light drizzle as these clouds have rolled in from last night's very clear sky. Let's let's get under the uh, cover of the uh, the trees just inside the uh, forest here off the side of the road a little bit and and stay here for the night while the weather passes like right at the right at the edge of it yeah i think as we go we'll be in in the forest a little ways and then we'll go off the road you know enough so nobody uh no passers-by see our camp spot you're the ranger shaft yeah i think it's a safe over here i mean as safe as it's going to be no objections from me so, uh, yeah, we'll just do a regu- another uh, regular uh, night. Yeah, as soon as we make camp, Gozer's going to pass out. <sighs> going back to sleep. Gozer didn't want to, but uh, she's exhausted. Can we make Thuff sing her a lullaby to wish, <laughs> to wish her happy, to wish her dreams of golden mountains? <laughs> I, I say to Falzer, hey, hey, man, uh, before you wake her up tonight, wake me up first so I can watch. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, man. I'm going to be using a stick to wake her up uh, this time. A 40-foot pole? Yeah. <laughs> That'll still be fun to watch. I think I know where she's going to stick the stick. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. I only have so many pairs of underwear that are brought with me. <laughs> So as you as you get to the uh, edge of this forest and you kind of start bedding down, 
Uh, why does everyone make me a perception check? Always a good sign. <laughs> Nat 20, baby. <laughs> Can we take the average between mine and yours? Falls and rolls a two. 11. 11. I got a 22 because of Nat 20. All of you can see about uh, a mile or so behind you. Kind of a similar distance to like when you guys first spotted those goblins in, in the river. Again, you're kind of right on the edge of this clearing. A little obscured too by, by, the, by the trees. But you see this figure kind of off, uh, way off in the distance. And uh, it looks like it's like moving towards you. But just, just one like humanoid looking figure. It look, looks like a, you know, five, six foot tall, just person. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, impos- at this distance, impossible to make it any true features or really get a race, but just a, a, a solitary figure kind of moving in your general direction. This is before we bed down for the night? Yeah, this is kind of as you're, you're kind of, you've, you've now kind of basically broken this, into the border of, of this tree line, um, kind of, you know, paying attention to before you duck in kind of thing, but. I'm going to sort of move out behind some trees a little ways from the camp, just without, so I can watch the camp, but just sort of hide. That's what I want to do. Everyone can't hide, or can we? Yeah, we can. Uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm going to I'm gonna look around. Well, I guess, Shaft, you're already starting to wander off, right? And I'm, I'm not going to be far away, just okay. a, a close-by tree. I'm going to pull out my rapiers and just sort of sit there and watch what happens. So I guess we kind of see see each other kind of just look around and find hiding spots are you lighting a fire so basically you're just i am not lighting a fire. waiting for this guy uh bryn is going to cast spell upon or jump upon herself okay you want to get up in a tree yeah i'm gonna jump and grab whatever branch the highest branch i can sure yeah so these are these trees are uh, like deciduous so yeah easily you could jump up you know the the lowest like bow that looks like could support your weight would maybe be like 10 feet up this these this trunk of this tree oh, yeah. so you yeah no problem you get right up there. yeah a little little quick you know three or four steps before and boom bound right up there yeah so i'll go underneath her and and hold my staff up and say bren pull me up <laughs> uh... <laughs> what does bren do it <laughs> laughs okay I, I turn with my tail between my legs and go find Bryn another Bryn kind of like spot. swats the rod away like, don't give away my position. Go away. S- spare the rod, spoil the child. Isn't that what Amen, I have to say brother. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to kind of make like shaft and try and find a, a place to hide that's also, you know, has a good vantage point, pr- preferably that can see kind of. Okay, so where where exactly are you guys in relation to the road here? Probably about uh, 100 feet off the road over. Okay. Just, you know, and and so if somebody's walking by, we could, you know, they couldn't see us directly, but, you know. Like we yeah. can see the road. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. And are you all on the same side of this road? So let's say, yeah. um, so as this road, it kind of, cur- it, you know, starts traveling east and it kind of curves northward a little bit, so... You're kind of in this northward-facing section of this road. Uh, you know, running the road run north-south. So are you going to be mm-hmm. on the east or the, the western side? Be on the eastern side. So anybody... So again, this figure, if it was making a beeline for you, it would have to come from the western side, cross the road, and then you would be, be in direct visibility with you guys. Yep. Uh, are any of you else getting in, in a tree? Like, Shaf, you're not getting in a tree, right? I'm not in a tree. I mean, I'm I'm not afraid of what's coming down the road. It's probably just a traveler. Just, uh, you know, no reason to make any conversation unless it looks like we need to. Sure. Yeah, and you all now have a nice heads up since, you know, the it wasn't <laughs> the figure clear with Falzern's crappy perception. The figure clearly wasn't <laughs> wasn't making m- many attempts to, to, like, hide himself. or. Yeah, my, my intent is just to be able to get a better look without being found out in case there's any reason why I don't want this person to see us. Yeah, I mean, Bryn prefers to hide up high and have her bow ready. Sure, that that's, makes total sense. That's just her. Okay, Bryn, uh, why don't... Actually, why doesn't everybody give me a... Give me a stealth check, as you guys have... Unless you really have no intention of being stealthy, you just want to be off the road. 13. 20. 12. And Gozer, what are you doing? 
Gozer is laying on the ground, grabbing Thuft and holding him like a teddy bear and sleeping. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> zero stealth for you, I guess. <laughs> well, I'll take a I'll take a passive stealth. She's hiding under Thuft. So what's ten plus? <laughs> <laughs> what's ten? What's ten plus your uh, stealth? That would be fifteen. Pretty you have good. a plus five to stealth. Yep. Wow. Okay. And. Thuft, unfortunately, has a much lower <laughs> <laughs> lower stealth as his passive is, is ten. He he has a slight snore. Yeah. So uh, have you guys? Are you guys kind of taking the same same like shift order? Because I assume you're not waiting for this person to pass before you start your long rest. You're just going to kind of get. Into uh, it. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going to wait for him to pass. Oh, I'm okay. not going to. Yeah, I want to see. What, I mean, if you say he's about a half mile away. I mean. I'm just gonna watch. Oh, he'll until yeah, he... he'll be upon he'll be upon your path in like an hour, like not yeah, like yeah. short like pretty shortly. Or actually, sorry, less than an hour. Like yeah, twenty way, way minutes. Than that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm feeling pretty good, so I'm just gonna stay awake and, and wait till he goes by. It's, and uh, it's about what it's about what time of day? You're it's coming to yeah about evening ish. Okay, right. There's right. a light drizzle. Light drizzle, still, 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 still daylight out though. Still some, some like visibility, especially for for a shaft. Still, uh, good visibility. Bryn is definitely just gonna wait twenty minutes. That's nothing to her. Okay, as you guys are all kind of sitting here, just kind of you know quiet, keeping an eye out. You see this figure kind of coming down into your your field of view. Is this this figure, and he's just kind of walking. You actually see him come through like the the edge of the trees on the on the other side of this road almost like as if you if you were drawing a line you could pretty well say oh from where we saw him he's like literally just walking like almost as the crow flies directly towards it and he steps onto the road and he kind of looks around and why doesn't everybody make me a perception check 14 no i assume you don't want one from gozer if you're if you're asleep then then no need nope <laughs> 10 and Bryn, you had a nine. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, from your your basically, you've set it up so you have a, a clear line. But you see this figure, and his skin is like grayed and paled out, and he has this what once was a very brightly colored vest. But even even his vest and like his clothing looks as if it's got like this gray hue to it, like very like you know when. Um, Spoilers for Infinity War when Vision dies and all of his color drains from him and he like grays out. That's kind of like this this color is kind of as if it's been like washed out of this figure. Except for upon his head, a yellow little cap, look what looks like a like a night cap. Both arms end in stumps and he has no hands. As you guys recognize Sardo the Magician standing Are in the middle of the road. Are you kidding me? As soon as you said nightcap, man, I I knew. <laughs> yeah, me too. Freaking Sardo. As he's you, so he gets on the road and he's kind of looking around, and he finally just centers right on where you guys are in the woods, and just starts walking towards you. Is this a slow walk? He doesn't seem to be in a hurry. Okay. This is a zombie walk. Yeah, he's animated. It's not a shamble. It is a. It looks like it, like no, you like you know what I mean. Like it's not like a. It's not like a like lurch. It's like a purposeful walk towards you. All right, I'm pulling out my crossbow. Okay, let's. Uh, if we're gonna do that, then let's roll initiative. Do uh, do we get a? It's not really a surprise attack. You do not get a attack. surprise round on him. No, he knows exactly where you are. Is this yet another example of a intricate? narrative session where we should have been communicating with an NPC that we're killing instead. <laughs> no, this guy's already been... For Leland. You guys have already some, murdered Sardo. He's already he's been killed some, once. He's got some really important information to tell us that we're never gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, last we saw, Chucky was dragging him to the mortician, right? Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't see anything good coming from this. The last you saw, Sardo's body was in, in the, cave? The, the cave. Yeah. Right. Gozer's, it's because we didn't go through the door in that cave. Gozer squished his hand underfoot. Oh, somebody's hand, yeah. I have a nineteen for initiative. Seventeen for Bryn. Oh, nat twenty. Yeah, but you still get to add your. No, I don't add yeah. anything to initiative rolls. Yeah, you. Add he has your no dex. dex. That's why he adds. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say. 
Gozer will get you and Thuff to roll in should you wake up. Okay. Bryn's, uh, Bryn's gonna keep an eye on Gozer. If this is, like, a quick thing, like, she's just gonna keep an eye on Gozer while she's sleeping, kind of be more observant than usual because of their conversation the night before. Baldrin, you're first to act. Oh, dear. All right. He, where, where is he in relation to me? How, how far away? Well, you guys were about 100 feet off the road, Shaft had said, so he's uh, 100, feet of you, 100 feet away and just walking towards you. And you, so you're in the midst of these, these pretty thick trees as well, so it's yeah. uh, difficult to get a, a straight line on him, but you can, if you can see him, you, could, you can shoot some at him, right? Sorry, you said how many feet? Uh, 100. 100. 100. Or less. Closing in. Um, I think maybe I'll just see how he reacts to a firebolt. It's got a 120 foot uh, range. Okay. So that is a uh, 15 to hit. That hits. Okay. And nine fire damage. So it kind of just blasts him back a little bit, but he just continues to, to move forward. It definitely hasn't stopped him. Um, anything else? Are you going to move? Are you going to yell to Gozer? Um, yeah, I will yell at Gozer. Well, no, she's sleeping. I'm going to hope that we can deal with Sardo on our own without Gozer. <laughs> I mean, that's my thought. She but needs a rest. I can't think for you. She's exhausted. Then shaft her up. Okay, I'm going to move up about 30 feet. I'm going to use my crossbow, which would still be outside of my range without disadvantage. So I'm going to go ahead and Hunter's Mark him with my bonus action. And then I'm going to attack with disadvantage. And that would give me a four, 13 to hit. 13 hits. That would be a 10. Bryn. So she, he just gave him 10 damage. Yes. So he said 19 damage. Okay. Um, what does he look like? What's he doing? Is he saying anything? He's, Obviously he's closer. Yet. He's, yeah, he's, he's... Well, yeah, technically he hasn't quite closed him, but he's still... He's still now walking. Now he's got a, a bolt in his shoulder as he kind of pulls it out of him and still still moving towards you. As he kind, You kind of see this grin now kind of spreading over his face. Okay, but he's not saying anything. He's not He hasn't. Trying. He hasn't quite spoken yet, no. Does he look unfriendly? Well, he's he's smiling, as you guys are yeah. hurting him. <laughs> Bryn's just, like, really curious what That's to do. That's usually a good sign. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, why don't you... Okay, you can all make me a... Uh... Make me a uh, arcana or a religion check, whatever is higher for you. It's a 14 for Falzer. 10 for Shaft. 8 for Bryn. So, Falzy, you, with your 14, you, again, you've very studied, you've you've read about this sort of creature and kind of, and just piecing together, well, whoa, we've already killed this guy, what's going on? And also his, you know, noting that he doesn't seem to be, like, mindless. You can kind of piece together that Sardo has become a what's called a revenant, which is generally when someone has been someone has been wronged and murdered, they come back for the sole purpose of enacting revenge on on their the people responsible for its death. So clearly, he uh, some some type of means of brought, has brought him back. Some type of possibly divine means has, has brought him back to. To, to hunt you guys down now and return the favor. <laughs> so Falzern resists the urge to point and yell at where Bryn is. <laughs> in the tree. <laughs> She's up there. Well, he knows. He saw my arrow. Do I know anything about... Or wait, did I even get an attack yet? No, it's, I didn't. it's still your turn. Yeah, it's still okay. your turn, Bryn. Shaft did. No, so I it's didn't. not your turn. Do I know anything more about these revenant, like, what they might be resistant or more susceptible to you know that you should keep hitting it with fire okay it's right up my alley all right Bryn what is so what do you want do you want to I want Falzerin to light my arrow on fire <laughs> and then <laughs> do a flaming arrow um do you really trust my aim do I get a sneak spear? attack because he hasn't had a turn yet he has not acted yet so you do get uh whatever your assassin you get so does that give you advantage on someone who hasn't acted yet? Yep. When a creature hasn't taken a turn, I get advantage, and when I have advantage, I get sneak attack. So, I've already had my bow pulled back for a while now, and uh, I'm gonna 
Let the arrow fly. 19 to hit. Oh, but I, I can do advantage, I guess. But yep. it doesn't matter, right? It hits You might anyway. get a critical. Well, you might get oh, a critical. Oh, true, 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 true. No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so your, your, your 19 hits. Okay. And then... Oh. It's just plus three once, right? That's right, yeah. 19. Dang. All right. Good hit. Y'all deal in 19 and two different attacks. And just one arrow. Boom. <laughs> okay, so Sardo... He just continues to move. He's actually going to... Yeah, no, he's going to move. Uh, he's going to dash, so he moves 60 feet. So he's, like, real close to, to Shaft now. About 10 feet away from Shaft. Hello, my friends. Been a long time. Yeah, Sardos, is it? Sardo, Sardo. Sardo, uh, Yeah, haven't seen you in a bit. Uh, you're looking... Eh, not all that great, actually. Sort of put my crossbow down and pull up my rapiers and hold them and go, Why don't you just stay right where you are? Oh no, we have business. We have business and you will be losing on this deal. And uh, back to the top <laughs> is back to the top is falls right. <laughs> Alright. I love it. If there's that if there's anything I hate, it's magic shop owners that want me to lose on the deal. <laughs> this guy's going down. So so he's 40 feet from you now, Baldwin. Yeah. I think uh, Flaming Sphere is going to be pulled out. If you could hit him. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we haven't missed yet, so we don't know what his AC is. So that's a uh, 8 to hit. That's a miss. But Flaming Sphere, do you roll to attack? Oh. You um, conjure the sphere, right? Yeah, it's a it's a concentration. Gozer's still holding theft. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, theft squeaks because I squeeze him a little too hard. <laughs> so it's a conjuration spell. Casting time is one action. It's concentration. You make a dex save. Five foot diameter sphere. Fire appears. Any creature that ends his turn within five feet must make a deck save. Doesn't sound like you have to roll to attack. How close is Sardo to Gozer? Uh, he's he's roughly 40 feet from all of you except for Shaft, which, because he's closer because Shaft moved forward. Okay. So for, for any concentration spell, I don't I don't make a... No, you just he has to make a deck save. The spell okay. the spell text does not say you make an attack roll. So he in in again in lieu of the attack roll you make, he makes a saving throw against your spell difficulty check. Is that typical for most concentration spells or no? Do not link the saving throw and concentration spell. Those have nothing to do with each other. Okay. This ha- the, the the way this spell manifests, you still have you have to maintain concentration to keep the sphere going right that's right. basically what it does nothing to do with the effects of the sphere it's strictly to do with basically the flavor of the spell okay so i'm i'm gonna conjure this flaming ball of fire is it a is it a great ball of fire it, it very well <laughs> goodness may be. gracious it's a medium ball of fire <laughs> <laughs> so if he ends his turn within five feet he has to make a dex saving throw as a bonus action which i'm gonna use right now I'm going to move this sphere um, to ram him. To hit him. Okay, so he makes a dex saving throw. He only gets a 5, so he's going to take full damage. Okay, so 2d6. Uh, Unfortunately, that's only 3 damage. (laughs) Ouch. And then I'm I'm going to keep that um, within range of him so that he's going to have to make another. Sure, it's, uh, it's, it's like behind him now. Yeah. Okay. All right, shaft. Okay, so I sort of walk flank around him a little bit as he sees me of course he'll be turning as I'm sort of walking up towards him and say uh yeah I, I, you know the hat I got from you last time wasn't really uh wasn't really very helpful to me the one uh, the one you got on uh, there you had any good dreams le- recently uh, everything going well only a vengeance my friend only a vengeance so where where are you moving around him you can't really f- are you getting adjacent to him I was 10 feet away from him yep. prior, so I'm right. sort of maintaining that 10-foot radius as I sort of walk around 5, 10 okay, feet. Okay, so you, you can't you can't move very far because he has this sphere behind him. So if you move 
even 10 feet around him, you're getting within 5 feet of that sphere, which means when you end your turn, you will also take its damage. Just FYI. Okay. Then I, I'll make sure I don't go near the big okay. ball okay. of fire. And, uh, <laughs> and I'll attack. Uh, from 10 feet away? No, I'm going to move up. Okay. Okay, that is a 13. That hits. 12 points of damage. All right. Take my second attack. Oh, crit. Nice. Eight points of damage. Okay. With the crit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I basically go up to him with my, I have my rapiers out and, and I, I sort of, I, I give him a good look. Does he look like he's been chopped up or anything? You know. He just, again, it's, he's got these stumps. Like they don't even end. They're not even like the stumps of his arms aren't even like sewn shut. They're literally just like, you see the protruding like wrist bone from both of them. But other than that, he's just, his skin is just gray and, you know, dead looking. All right. Yeah. So I go up and, and try to slash, you know, across where his bloody stumps were up to about his elbows. Or, uh, yeah. And just try to de-hand, de-arm him, disarm him. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> All right, Bryn, you're up. I'm trying to think of something more creative to say than just like, I shoot at him. I'm well, the for... suspense isn't killing him, I... so you got to do something <laughs> to kill him. <laughs> cut all that out. We said we can cut out silences, so I was just thinking. Gosh. All right, I attack him. My longbow. Ugh. I miss. It's terrible. Well, no, no, I. We don't know what his AC is. Seven. Yeah, that's a miss. <laughs> <laughs> you already rolled a seven and missed. No. We. Well, I don't know if Neil ever said that was a miss, but it was. We didn't. I didn't end up having to roll. Okay, so Sardo, he's just kind of, you know, he gives gives Shaft a smile, and he just. Uh, he kind of doesn't even bother with him. He just moves right towards Bryn. So as he leaves Shaft, you'll get to take an attack of opportunity if you so choose. So when I slashed him, did he seem like he reacted to it like there was a pain involved in oh, that? It, de- it, definitely, it definitely hurt him. Yes, but did he have a reaction like it? he felt it, I could see it hurt him or it's just I'm just doing stuff to him? In other words, is he like numb? Uh, that's a good question. That's not really covered in the man's monster stat block of the Revenant. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to say yes. He like he's uh, clearly a- aware of the damage he's taken, and it is. It looks like it is affecting him. All right. So I'll, I'll take that opportunity attack. That's going to hit. That's a 23. Yep. And can I choose? I can choose to use Colossus Slayer, but probably not on as a opportunity attack, correct? That would only be on my turn I, as an action. I don't know. I don't think Colossus Slayer has a action tied to it. Is it not just it a... It says, uh, you wear down your opponent when you hit a creature with a weapon attack. The creature takes an additional 1d8 damage if it's below its hit point maximum. There you go. You can deal this as an extra damage once per turn. So I didn't do it last time, no, so I'll not. go ahead and do that. Alright, so here we go. That's going to be that'd be 20 points of damage. Wow. Holy crap. Good job. So I'm gonna, as he starts walking past me, I'm gonna spin around and stick my my rapier through him, uh, and then yank it back out and step back. I, you know, I can't really move, but. And as you pull your rapier back out, there's a you've skewered at one of his kidneys that has <laughs> come out of him. <laughs> and he walks uh, right up to the tree that Bryn is in, and he just looks at you, and his eyes kind of take on this this like menace and Bryn, can you make me a wisdom saving throw please sure what a it's not a skill check what a, sorry what's saving throw saving throw you there should be a little box that has all your saving oh, throws oh right yeah so you add that to your d20 roll i don't have anything but i got 19 okay you're you're fine as you kind of you know in this tree you kind of feel like your body stiffen up as you, and then you kind of just shake it off and falls in remind me how a concentration spell works um what am i allowed to do while i'm concentrating you cannot cast another spell that requires concentration without losing concentration on the first one but i can cast another spell you can cast any other spell yeah yeah okay any other spell will still maintain your sphere so i think i'll use my bonus action to move it up to within five feet of him but how far does it move are you 30 
Okay, yeah, then you're fine. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Well, I'll, I'll ram it into him actually. Uh, you you don't have the movement to ram it. You can just get it. Okay. You would need 35 to, to ram into him. So you can get it right back, basically where he moved. Right, you're just kind of we're just kind of moving him at the sphere. So you can put it right uh, next to him. So at the end of his turn, he'll take that fire damage. Right? Is that what? He'll need to do another deck save if he ends his turn within five. If minutes. he ends his turn, okay. So you yeah. can move it up to him. So for my action, I'm how far from him? He's about. You're about ten feet from him now. He's moved up to close. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna. I can move and then cast. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna put twenty feet further between us, so I'll be thirty feet away from him. Uh, let's make that. Let's make that forty feet. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to move 30 feet, so there's a total of 40 between us, and then I'm going to use uh, Scorching Ray. This is a second level spell. Um, It's kind of similar to Magic Missile. I create three rays of fire and hurl them at one target or targets within range. I can choose to deal them all to one person or split them up. Right, you must make an attack roll for each ray. So that's a 17 for the first? That's a hit. Should I roll damage now or, or roll all three attack rolls? Just roll all, yeah, roll all three attack rolls and we'll just add all the... The next is a 10. That's miss. And a 16. Okay, so two two of your rays hit. So that's 46 fire damage. Damn. 12 fire damage. Shaft. Okay, so he's how far away from me? He's, you know, 30 feet from you. And this ball of fire, is it behind him? Yeah, it's like right behind him. Okay. Um... In that case, I'm just going to pull out my crossbow again. Okay. That would be a 20. Uh, 11 points of damage. All right. And then I'm going to move. Not. I'm going to move up off to the side of him, so I'm with, uh, away from the ball of fire. Okay. But uh, 30 feet sort of off at a 45-degree angle. All right. And uh, you're up, Bryn. And he's right below me underneath he's like the right, tree? Yeah, he's right below you. Am I allowed to jump down and slash him? Yeah, you can try. You might take some falling damage. Oh, how high up am I? Ten feet. So you, for every ten feet you drop, you take one d6 damage, falling damage. She can't, like, roll an acrobatics check and maybe negate the damage? Yeah, we did that before and we shouldn't have, so I'm going to say probably no. Oh. She might be able to avoid falling prone, though. I'm thinking the fall damage might be worth a cool move jumping out of the tree with my rapier. Crazy. I know I can't aim at his head, but if I hit, I want to slice his head off. (laughs) I would like to put my longbow away and take out my rapier and uh, hop down and like land on him and try to poke him. Poke him good. Okay, so okay, let's say if you if you hit him uh, your fall damage will be reduced. By half. Because I'll like let's, land on let's him. Let's say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He'll kind of like break That's what some of yeah. your fall. Yeah. We okay. can do that. So 15. That hits him. All right. So roll your, go ahead and roll your damage. No sneak attack though. Okay. So you're just like plummeting down downwards with this rapier point. Six damage. All right. And you'll take two falling damage. Okay. And uh, you still have your movement. And a, and a cunning action, so you could still like disengage from him and get away. That's from what him I was more. thinking. Yeah, let's disengage and get get thirty five feet away. Okay. Wow, he's frustrated because he can't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sucka. yeah, it's Sardo, and uh, yeah, like I said, he looks frustrated, so he's just kind of kind of turned to to Shaft, which is the only <laughs> one he can really get to. Oh, I guess he can get to Gozer. I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, he sees Gozer and he's remembering, ah, she kind of trounced up my store. <laughs> Only a little. He's going to walk over to uh, to Gozer, who is currently unconscious. Actually, you know what? Um, Gozer, why don't you roll me... Oh, man. Maybe like, Thuft wakes up? You guys have all been making noise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely with me jumping on him right, right there. Right, right, right. Okay, Gozer, make me a... I don't know what to do. You're fucking asleep. You know what? I'm going to make... Why... Okay, Sardo's going to make a stealth check, which he does not roll very well at all. So you, Gozer, you have you 
you've now come to and you are awake, but you are still prone with Thuff kind of on top of you, but you've heard Sarjo's like reacting and talking and now he's moved up to you. So he's he's right up to you and he's just gonna lay into into you, but I'm gonna give you I'm gonna Thuff give shielding. you Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> give you uh, uh, partial cover because Thuff is <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to give you partial cover. So if he misses, he will hit Thuft. But you get to add a plus two to your AC for his attacks. Okay. All right. So, yes, you are prone, so he has advantage on you. So he just raises his stumps, and he brings them both down on you, Gozer. First one, he hits you for uh, 23. Yeah, that hit. Miss Thuft and hit me. Miss Thuft hits you for 11 bludgeoning. 11 does not. Oh, 11 damage. Okay. Yeah, 11 damage. Uh, so that's 6 damage? Uh, no, you're not raging. Oh, I'm not damaged. <laughs> 11. Shoot. <laughs> and his second uh, second fist, as he brings both stumps down, is a 22. Uh, Thuff is no good to me here. Thuff's no good to you. <laughs> and he hits you for another 10 bludgeoning. Oh, okay. And uh, that's his turn. So goes why don't you go ahead? Damage. You're up. Roll some initiative now, Gozer, and we'll put you into the, this round here. Okay, I rolled a 20. Nice. Okay, so now... Leland, can, real quick, for the sake of learning, what does, like, when she had half cover, can you explain that? Because I don't think we've ever talked about that. There's, um, I think it's just called partial. There's, like, partial, half, and full cover. So partial gives you a plus two bonus to your AC, if you have half cover, which, you know, literally is as it sounds, if half of you is blocked by something, like if you're, you know, maybe right. Gozer was behind like a three foot wall or something, you right. would get a plus five to your AC and full cover means you cannot be seen by an enemy attack, meaning they can't even attack you. So his rolls were, his rolls were really good to hit. His rolls were very high. Yeah. Yes. But again, it was because he had that advantage because she was prone. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, so Gozer and Falsey, you are both 20, so you can decide which one of you would like to act first. Uh, I think Gozer's going to be going. Yeah, is it why don't we turn? just. Le- yeah, let's, Gozer, you're up. Gozer let's needs just, to go. go. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I'd rather go second. Okay. Uh, Gozer is going to throw Thuft at Sardo. <laughs> All right, that wakes, that wakes him <laughs> yes. up. Yes. And I'll put him in the initiative here, too, now. Oh, boy. Okay, so you're going to use him as. An improvised weapon, let's say. <laughs> so make a... I don't even know what to do. Make a strength. <laughs> let's make a make a strength, a regular strength attack, like you would with a normal weapon. That would be... Um... So I'm just adding my, my strength modifier, that's it. Yeah, because you're not so proficient it. with wheeling goblins. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so 11. Oh, 11 does not hit. Okay. With wielding goblins. Thuff, Thuff is gonna take some. <laughs> Thuff's gonna take some damage. So Thuff's gonna take a, a D4 damage here as you smash him against Sardo's body. Thuff takes four bludgeoning damage. Okay, and then I'm going to jump up and I'm going to roar two blades. Okay, Falzern. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna smash that um, flaming ball of fire into him again. You you cannot. What? Or, yes, I'm sorry, you can, because he only had to move about 10 feet up to go there. So, yes, right. okay, you can yeah. ram it right into it. So he makes a dexterity check, which he gets a 12, which ties your DC, meaning he succeeded, so he takes half damage, I believe, right? Yes. So two D, a half of 2d6, so 1d6. No, 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 roll both, but just to, then divide it by oh, half. Oh, I see. Nice. So he takes five fire damage. And so that was your bonus action. Yes. I'm going to use one of my favorites, Chromatic Orb. Got a good track record with this bad boy. So I'm going to choose fire damage. I'm going to hurl a four-inch diameter sphere of fire. Range is 90 feet. That is a 17 to hit. Yep, hits. That's 14 fire damage. Good job. He's looking really rough. He's kind of singy, and he's kind of smoking from all this fire you've been hitting him with. And uh, Shaft, you're up. Okay, I'm going up to him. I'm going to give him a poke. That would be a 18 to hit. Yep, that hits. I'm going to give him... Let me use Colossus Slayer on top of it for this action also. 22 points of damage. That Jeez. is enough. As you put Holy. your rapier just kind of like 
How you just imagine you stabbing it up through his chin, out the top of his head. And Does his he hat just, come off on the top his, of yeah, my... Yeah, his hat pops up. <laughs> and as you pull it back out, his, his just body just topples to the, the forest floor. And you all kind of see, like, it looks like like a, a, this ghostly figure kind of just, like, rises up out of his body and then just kind of fades out, of, fades away. And that's our show. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. For your own musical inquiries, contact jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All other music and ambient noise is courtesy of tabletopaudio.com. The Encouragement Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. Visit criticalhitdesign.com for all of your graphic design needs. You can find more info on the characters and world at encouragementparty.com. Enjoying the show? Have any questions or rules corrections? Email us, contact at IncursivalParty.com, or reach out on social media. The Incursible Party on Facebook and Instagram, at IncursivalPar on Twitter, using the hashtag AfterPartyIP for a shout-out during our behind-the-screen After Party episodes that drop every fourth release. Happy adventuring!